Spring Vegetable Harvest A tour of the California Garden Some things for you to do All this and a lot more in today's episode of California Gardening So let's begin with the harvest we made this month beginning with beets We didn't harvest a lot of beets this month but we had some growing in our raised bed and you can see here this is the Detroit dark red beet an excellent beet variety to grow in your home garden and this is how the beet looks like after it's washed great quality greens and excellent beet roots broccoli we were growing the purple sprouting broccoli in our raised bed as well as in some containers and you can see here how this broccoli grows it does not grow like a regular broccoli but more so like a flowering kind of a broccoli and the heads are purple in color and they are extremely healthy so this is the first time we grew the purple sprouting broccoli and it was a pleasure growing it moving on to brussels sprouts one of my favorite harvests for this month the brussels sprouts are produced on the side stems as you see here and the brussels sprouts is a brassica it belongs to the brassica family of plants which includes cabbage cauliflower etc and you can see how we are harvesting these brussels sprouts initially it was a little difficult to get the first few out so i just used a knife to separate these sprouts from the main stem and they are attached quite firmly to the main plant so this is one way to start harvesting your brussels sprouts and in southern california you can grow brussels sprouts pretty much throughout the year they don't like the hot summer weather but since we started these in fall they have grown into spring and have produced a lot of these beautiful brussels sprouts and we had one more plant so there are actually two brussels sprout plants growing on the raised bed and we are harvesting a few from each and you can keep harvesting the brussels sprouts as the plant grows the plant will keep getting taller and you can still harvest these brussels sprouts now if you haven't eaten brussels sprouts think of brussels sprouts like a mini cabbage just like small cabbages they taste quite similar to cabbages but not exactly the same they have a more pungent taste compared to cabbages cabbages taste a little milder but brussels sprouts are also extremely healthy they are very good for your health and i personally like them and there's one more way you can harvest your brussels sprouts which is just remove them by your hand just use some pressure from your thumb and just push them down and they should separate out from the plant now this method is not that easy it does require a little bit of force to push these brussels sprouts out but it is a lot faster and you can see all our brussels sprouts that we harvested here beautiful looking brussels sprouts from just two plants and there are still plenty more on the plants that we are going to be harvesting in the next month moving on to cabbage the first cabbage we harvested was from our raised bed this was a huge cabbage the head was quite large in size and we are harvesting this cabbage now and as you see here the cabbage head is quite large beautiful looking cabbage and this is how it looks like after the harvest quite a beautiful looking cabbage and we had more cabbage growing in our containers this is our whiskey barrel container and this is the early maturing cabbage the 45 day cabbage which had grown quite well so it was time to harvest this cabbage and move on to planting other plants in this container even the 45 day cabbage is quite good looking these are two more cabbages that were growing in a whiskey barrel and i've noticed that just one cabbage is good enough to be grown in one whiskey barrel you can grow multiple cabbages but you will get smaller heads so if you don't mind eating smaller heads of cabbage go ahead and plant two or three in each container and here's how the harvest looks like all these 45 day cabbages are excellent quality cabbages and a pleasure to grow in your home garden carrots we had our kuroda carrots that were growing in our raised bed 
and i really loved these kuroda carrots the kuroda carrots are not only delicious they also grow to a larger size they're not like small carrots they grow quite large and they're extremely easy to grow and they love the spring season so spring and fall are the best times to grow kuroda carrots so overall i'm pretty happy with the way the kuroda carrots grew for me this season and i might be planting more next season and here are our carrots nicely washed and ready to be eaten and they produce good tops as well which are also edible and the carrots themselves the roots are quite delicious corn we planted a lot of corn very early this is the dakota black corn it's a type of popcorn not a sweet corn so this corn is not sweet at all and you can see these beautiful black kernels that have been formed and they're a little spiky a little different than conventional corn and they are not sweet at all so if you like corn that's not sweet or you just want to use your corn to make popcorn or just roast and eat them this is a great corn variety to grow eggplants we had our overwintered black beauty eggplant growing in this small container and although it's not been doing that well it does have some issues with spider mites we got a decent eggplant from this one plant garlic we were growing our garlic in this whiskey barrel container and this was started in winter so we planted these around november of last year and you can see we started harvesting them now the leaves have become yellow the tops are slowly dying and this is the perfect time to harvest this garlic and you can see the bulbs look quite good they are decent sized bulbs and we are growing 18 garlic plants in this one whiskey barrel container so i think this is the best way to grow garlic is use whiskey barrel containers like these they grow quite well they have enough space to send their roots out into the soil and you can grow a lot of garlic in a very small space so we have harvested all our garlic as you can see beautiful looking garlic now they do need to be cured they take about one or two weeks to cure so i just leave them out in an open tray and keep it in a shaded area I usually dry them for about 30 minutes or so before I bring them into a shaded area and after about a week or 10 days you can see the garlic has started curing and at this stage you can start removing the dirt around the garlic the outer skin would have hardened by now and you can just chop off the top part of the garlic and that's your garlic harvest and i'll show you a couple more garlic bulbs on how you can store them so you just chop off the bottom part these are the roots and then chop off the neck as you see here and you can remove a little bit of dirt on the top part of the garlic and this should come off easily but if there's a little bit of dirt don't worry let it remain it doesn't cause any harm the garlic will still stay fresh for quite a long time and remember that this garlic is from gilroy organic garlic it's a soft neck type you can see the necks are pretty soft and once again we just remove the roots and we store this garlic bulb in a cool and shaded place and sometimes you can remove the cover a little bit and still have another layer of cover on the garlic and very beautiful looking cloves very nice quite big and here are all our cloves which can be either eaten directly or you can store them for quite some time now we also had garlic growing in our raised bed 
and here are some of the garlic bulbs we harvested now we had interplanted these garlic plants with our cabbages there were some cabbages growing here and some corn as well after that but you can see here the garlic plants have grown quite well even around these plants so if you are planning to grow garlic in your garden and you don't consume a lot of garlic you can just interplant it amongst other plants like cabbages and tomatoes and it will keep the bugs away too as a bonus we also had elephant garlic growing in our raised bed the elephant garlic is not a true garlic but it's a huge garlic the bulb is quite large as you can see here and this would have grown larger if i had left it for some more time but we did have to start clearing out this bed for planting our summer vegetables but you can see here the elephant garlic is quite large the bulb is quite large and on all the elephant garlic plants you see these small sort of garlic cloves and i've tried to plant these in the past and i have not been successful at growing new plants from these so i'm not really sure what's the purpose of these little cloves that come on the outside now the elephant garlic just like regular garlic will need to be cured so when you harvest the elephant garlic the bulbs will still be moist the outer skin would not have been formed while the garlic is growing so you do need to cure these elephant garlic bulbs as well now once again you can see all these outer cloves and we planted about 3 or 4 elephant garlic plants in this raised bed and all these were planted about 3 or 4 months ago so regular garlic takes about 5 to 6 months to mature and so does elephant garlic so we could have waited for another month maybe 2 months before we harvested the garlic the elephant garlic but we did go ahead and harvest it during this time and once again the bulb is quite large and here is one more the final one that we are harvesting and here you can look at our harvest quite large bulbs of elephant garlic ready to be cured and they will take some time to cure low quads I hope you didn't miss my episode on low quads a detailed episode that was just posted earlier but these low quads are just delicious fruits one of the tastiest fruits in my opinion extremely easy to grow low quads are something that you must try growing in your home garden and we did harvest a lot of low quads this month this was actually our low quad harvest month we did harvest quite a lot and you can see here just after waiting for a few more days the low quads turn a little more orange and they are now the sweetest and these low quads have a very unique tropical flavor and the more orange or deep yellow they get the sweeter they are mint our mint plant was growing in our whiskey barrel container when spring arrived these mint plants just took off as you can see now i'm growing this mint in a semi shaded area so while it does get sun during some time of the day it stays in shade for the rest of the day and you can see here how nicely the mint has grown and mint is one plant where you will get better quality greens if you grow them in a shaded area so when i say shade it doesn't have to be completely shaded but more like a partially shaded area and you can look at our mint harvest here beautiful looking mint great quality mint very fresh and ready to be consumed onions our red bulbing onions were ready for harvest and i like harvesting onions at this stage when the bulbs are a little large but not extremely large because i like to eat these onions raw and this kind of onion makes excellent salad onions and the white ones as well we had the white bunching onions that we harvested and we harvested quite a lot of onions 
we in fact harvested all our bunching onions or spring onions and in this raised bed our second raised bed you might have seen we were growing quite a lot of these spring onions and we harvested all of them so all in all we harvested quite a lot of green onions or bunching onions from this one raised bed and these onions had overgrown they were due for harvest we weren't eating them as quickly as they were being produced so it was time to harvest all these bunching onions quite a lot of them and we harvested so many that we shared them with our neighbors and it was a great harvest overall moving on to peas we were growing the shelling type peas and these peas have been growing since fall so quite some time and it was time to do a final harvest and you can see how many peas have been formed on this plant now we grow the shelling type peas because we use the actual pea seeds or what's inside the pods if you like to use your pea as a whole including the pods then you can grow snap peas the snap peas can be consumed fully but we are growing the shelling type peas which will produce the pea seeds inside the pods and that's an important difference that a lot of gardeners don't understand is depending on the type of pea you want to grow you need to buy the correct seeds whether it's snap type or shelling type so overall we got a lot of peas from this one plant and the plant was almost towards the end of its life cycle and we also harvested some peas for their seeds so the ones that have dried can be used for planting a new round of crops potatoes we were growing potatoes in a lot of whiskey barrels and we decided to go ahead and harvest one of these you can see already the potatoes have started forming on the top part of the soil and there are multi colored potatoes in this whiskey barrel container so there's purple there's white and there's red and all three plants are growing in this one whiskey barrel container so what we're going to do is just try to clear the soil around these plants and then start harvesting our potatoes it's also a good idea to just remove the tops so that it's easier to work the soil and you can see the soil that we've used is quite good quality soil for growing these potatoes and some of these plants can be actually replanted and you can see as we start digging through the soil all these beautiful potatoes the purple ones especially i loved these purple potatoes but you can see some more red potatoes as well and the potting soil is nice and loose very good quality potting soil and here's a white potato as well and all these roots and all the remains can actually be planted if you want to start a new crop more potatoes here as you can see the white as well as the purple ones and potatoes are one crop that's just easier to grow in containers because it's easier to harvest them all your potatoes will be formed inside these containers and it's just so much easier to harvest your potatoes and this is how our harvest looks like multicolored potatoes very nice very delicious ready to be cured for a few days and then you can store them as well now we were also growing purple potatoes on our raised beds and all the plants had died the tops had died so it was time to harvest the potatoes and you can see the quality of soil here the compost that we used is of excellent quality and this is the kind of soil that will let you grow really good quality potatoes now one thing about purple potatoes is that it's hard to see them when you're harvesting so our soil is almost black in color and the potatoes themselves are black in color they're actually purple but they lean towards a darker color almost black and we also did find a lot of grubs hiding inside the soil lot of earthworms as well a lot of worms in your soil means your soil is of higher quality that the plants are getting all the nutrients as expected 
and you can see here a couple more potatoes. So it was a little difficult to dig in and harvest all the potatoes. You can barely see them. If you can spot the potatoes, then I'd say you have good eyes. But purple potatoes are very unique. And we had started these purple potatoes from just some potatoes that were in the pantry. They were just sprouting and we didn't really plan to use it. So we ended up planting these and these are pretty much free potatoes all you do is plant the potatoes from your pantry and then add in some compost and good soil and you get really good quality potatoes you can see so many worms here earthworms are great for your soil they help keep your soil nice and loose and once you harvest your potatoes just wash them very well now you can keep them in the sun for a few days if you want to store them we were planning to use these potatoes right away so we harvested them and these were ready to be used and our harvest looks beautiful lot of purple potatoes from just a small space moving on to radish most of the radish we harvested this month was from our green stock planter. You can see here beautiful looking radish. This is the early maturing radish variety. Also called cherry bell giant or crimson giant. And these radishes are quite good sized. They just take about 30 days to mature and they'll give you excellent tasting radishes. Now these radishes are quite mild, which is why I love eating them just raw as a salad and each green stock planter pocket can grow about two or three of these radishes and this is how our harvest looks like decently sized radishes from a great container system and you can grow these pretty much anywhere we were growing these in shallow containers as well you can see here these are extremely easy to grow they grow quite fast and they produce delicious tasting radish. So all in all, one of the easiest vegetables you can grow in your home garden. Swiss chard. These greens are so delicious that you can easily replace spinach with Swiss chard in almost everything that you cook or just eat raw. The Swiss chard leaves are quite beautiful. And Swiss chard can be grown year round in Southern California very easily. The leaves are of very high quality. It's best to harvest the leaves when they are tender. That way you get the most flavor out of the Swiss chard plant leaves. And you can just keep harvesting the leaves from the side and the plant will keep sending out new leaves. So it's a very easy way to harvest your Swiss chard leaves. Just keep harvesting the leaves from the side and let the plant produce more leaves. And here's how our harvest looks like. The Swiss chard looks absolutely beautiful. These are fresh Swiss chard leaves that can be eaten raw or cooked. Tomatoes. A lot of the tomatoes we harvested this month were from our patio planter. And this is a very small container and it just goes to show how many tomatoes you can grow even in a shallow container. And you can see our tomatoes, they look quite good. And there was a cherry type tomato as well growing in the same container. And we were able to harvest a lot of cherry tomatoes from this container too. And this container is about 8 inches deep. It's about 11 inches but there's a water reservoir on the bottom which makes watering a lot easier. But even in a small container, you can grow a lot of tomatoes very easily. And make sure you get the determinate tomato varieties to grow. These two varieties are determinate tomatoes, both the Little Bing and the Little Sicily. And you can see the harvest here, quite good looking tomatoes. Drop it. Drop it. And now let's take a tour of our garden. Beginning with the raised beds. 
In our first raised bed, we planted some pollinators actually everywhere. And we have our onions that are growing quite well. We have our cluster bean plants. They have taken off quite well now since it's warmer. And we have a lot of eggplants. This is the Indian thorned eggplant. And we have this indeterminate tomato plant that's grown like crazy. Followed by a lot of peppers. The peppers are in full production right now. You can see a lot of different varieties of peppers that we planted. And a lot of other varieties of peppers growing here. You can see one more here. It's growing quite big. And we planted peppers in sets of threes. And they are growing quite well. The tomato plants on the sides, these are the determinate tomatoes. And they have been doing okay. So all in all, a very lush bed filled with tomatoes, peppers, eggplants and some other plants as well. Moving on to the next raised bed, we have a lot of asparagus beans that we sowed here. Some of these are green and some of these are purple. And we sowed some carrot seeds on the side. We have some more pollinators. This is the salvia plant. We have a couple of tomatoes. We have a lot of brassicas, cabbages, cauliflower, etc. We have our Brussels sprouts plants, the two that were growing since last fall. And we also sowed a lot of cilantro seeds here. We have some bell pepper plants towards the back of the raised bed. So all in all, this raised bed was completely redone and is now ready to grow new plants. In the next raised bed, we have cucumbers. This is the snacking type cucumber. Beautiful looking cucumbers, as you can see, they're forming now. We have some overwintered cayenne pepper plants, followed by some bush bean plants. We have a bitter gourd plant that's trying to support itself on the trellis. Some more pollinators and another chili plant, cayenne pepper. And we have a lot of okras as well. There are a lot of okras growing. And then we have the bush beans. And after the bush beans, we have some more okras. So all in all, a lot of plants growing in this raised bed. Moving on to the next raised bed, we have some squashes. And on the side, we have this bottle gourd that's climbing on the trellis. And this bottle gourd plant gets pretty big. And you can see the bottle gourds are already forming now. Here's one that might become larger very soon. And back to our pumpkins and squashes. You can see here the pumpkin plant has grown quite big. The Napoli squash plant as well this is a huge squash plant. And the squashes that this plant produces are quite large. So we'll see how this one grows. And the pumpkin again, it's just taking over the whole raised bed. We have some more cucumbers, which are dwarfed by the size of the pumpkins here, the pumpkin plant. We have some mouse melon plants here that are trying to grow on the trellis. And you can see the pumpkins being formed here. And some corn plants, which were planted quite early, but are just taking off now. And here's one more pumpkin. And we have an overwintered tomato plant. We kept one tomato plant that was growing quite well and overwintered it. So all in all, this bed is like a jungle. There are just a lot of plants growing in this raised bed. And moving on to our final raised bed, we have some more pollinators that are planted. And we sowed some okra seeds here. A lot of okra seeds. 
we have some Indian white eggplants here. These are the small white and green eggplants, followed by some ivy gourd. The ivy gourd plants have now taken off and they need some support and trellising at this stage. But overall, they have been growing quite well. We have some more onions. You can see these are the bunching onions and some shallots as well. We have our lab lab bean plant, which is actually a vine and it's climbing on this support that we added. And here's one more ivy gourd plant on the back. And that's our final raised bed. So that completes the tour of our raised bed garden. Let's now move on to the containers. In the first container, we have shallots and bunching onions in this first container. They have grown quite well. This is our watering system that we use, the hose link watering system that I had spoken about in a previous episode. We have our galangal plant, our black moon egg plant, which has grown quite large now. We have our okra plant. There are two okra plants we planted here. Followed by our shishito pepper plant. This is a pepper variety that we are trying for the first time this year. And this is the thorned Indian eggplant. And you can see here the eggplants are being formed. This is a very delicious eggplant. I have eaten this eggplant. I have not grown it so far. And we planted a turmeric bulb in this container. We have mouse melons growing in the next one. And some more bunching onions and shallots in the last container. In our other container area, we have eggplants. There are two eggplants that are growing in the first container. Followed by the Juliet tomato. Which is now producing quite a lot of tomatoes as you see here. Now the Juliet tomato is one of my favorite tomato varieties to grow just because it grows so well. We have two pots that we have planted our potatoes in. The first one has compost and straw and the other one has potting mix. We have our okra. This is the red okra or the purple okra. Beautiful looking okra. And then we have our carrots. The carrots are almost ready for harvest. We did harvest a few in the harvest section. And they will be ready pretty soon. We have one tomato plant. This is the San Marzano tomato plant. It's an indeterminate type tomato. That's growing quite well. And then we have our bell peppers. You can see here the peppers are being formed now. They look quite good. We just sowed some fenugreek seeds in this container. We have our mint plant. We did harvest a lot of mint this month and there's still plenty of mint on the plant. We have our hyacinth bean plant that's now just producing some flowers and some pods as you see here. And it should start producing quite a lot of hyacinth beans now. We have our bunching onions and shallots, more of these in this container. And we have our red pride hybrid tomato that's growing quite well in this container. You can see here a lot of tomatoes being formed. In the next container, we just planted a new tomato variety and I'm excited to see how this tomato variety grows. Followed by two more eggplants and you can easily grow two eggplants in one whiskey barrel container. We have our millionaire eggplant which is overwintered from last year and is now taking off slowly, producing some good quality eggplants. We have our cluster bean plants. Not doing as well here in this container. We did get one cluster bean here, but on the raised bed, they are doing a lot better. In the next container, we have a lot of beets, and in the center, we have some 
bell peppers as you see here and the beets are almost ready i think we will start harvesting them in the next month and we have a nectarine plant the dwarf one and a tomato plant now a tomato plant had its stems broken during the winds we did have some days of high wind and the stems were broken we have our tendora plant this is a different tendora variety that's growing well we have our pigeon pea plant and i'm really excited to see how this plant grows and finally we have our longevity spinach plant in the corner this is our java plum tree still growing okay followed by our pineapple guava tree that's growing quite well now in this container no fruits yet and our curry leaf plant has taken off producing a lot of new leaves and even blooms we have our dwarf bears lime tree in this container and it is producing some limes and finally we sowed some purple carrot seeds in this container and i hope to harvest these soon let's take a look at our green stock planter this is a green stock leaf planter and we are growing a lot of onions in this container 42 onions one in each slot this is our patio container something that i don't show very often but i did start showing this just because i'm growing tomatoes in this container and we do harvest from this container a pretty easy to use container not too deep is self watering and we are growing a couple of plants in this container and that concludes a tour of our container garden let's now take a look at our flower garden our flower garden is in the front yard and it's quite beautiful with all the roses and all the other blooms that are there so i decided to do a quick flower tour you can see how beautiful these roses are most of the roses and lilies are on the front we have different varieties of roses that we planted and the bougainvilleas they look quite amazing there are more flowers than there are leaves on these plants they are a good hedge and they make a good accent wall if you have large wall spaces so all in all very beautiful flowers of the bougainvillea plant we have some mustard roses right here the mustard rose is actually dual colored it is yellow in the center and red on the outside we also have a tree rose plant that is producing multiple colored blooms so this plant was grafted with different colored roses and also let's take a quick look at the buddha area where we have our buddha fountain at and as you can see there are a lot of blooms lots of greens we have some roses some yellow roses some duranta plants some gypsy roses that grow in bunches and we have our buddha statue we do have some climbers on the back some more roses in the front and this area is now so beautiful with all the greens and all the blooms here we also have a lot of hibiscus plants that are growing i love growing the red hibiscus plant they are an absolute joy to grow Tesla What is Tesla doing? Bad dog. Who is a bad dog? Tesla is a bad dog. And now let's look at some things to do in your garden this month. We did prepare our raised beds this month, so I wanted to show you what all we did. So not only did we add our drip irrigation, we are also amending our soil with some good quality worm castings. Now this is very important for your plants. because it helps your plant uptake nutrients it has humus and a lot of other beneficial bacteria and what i've seen is whenever i add worm compost it also accelerates the amount of worms i see in the soil so what i do is i sprinkle the worm castings just like you see here you just need to make sure that you cover the surface of the entire area you don't have to go too overboard but usually for me one bag is enough to fill up one raised bed and these worm castings are from vermistera and once i add the worm castings i just water them very well so that they settle in before i add my potting mix on top or the raised bed mix on top 
So just make sure you moisten your worm castings once you add them. They are a little hydrophobic but don't worry once you water them in they will settle down quickly. And we are adding our potting mix on top of the worm castings we added. You can use any potting mix. Just use a nice lightweight potting mix. I'm using a potting mix that's organic and has moisture control as well. And we get these at our local Costco very easily. You can also use a raised bed mix. You don't need to be too fancy when adding soil to your raised bed. But just make sure that it has enough organic ingredients and some peat moss so that it retains moisture. And that's all you really need to do. Once you've topped off your raised bed, this is how it should look like. And it's ready for planting. So there we have it folks. That was our episode on the California garden for the month of May. And if you're not as bored as Tesla with the yawn here, go ahead and hit that like button. It does take time to make all these monthly videos. So I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. And if you have any comments, post them in the comments box below. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.